want to take a moment to uh, thank the uh, work branch of the NAACP, Alpha Kappa, Concerned Pastors, Delta Sigma, and the League of Women Voters. Very kind of you to invite me and get this opportunity to express my opinions and views, and hopefully, folks, my uh, great interest in serving on the council is not just to initiate uh, certain uh, policies, basically the policies outlined in the charter for the uh, legislative branch are pretty clear. But the one thing missing, and especially at this moment in our city's history, we've lost our democratic right, the will of the people, to decide our own local affairs. And no matter what we talk about in relation to the charter, until we get our house, our act together as a community, as a city, especially this city's government, we can't prevent, we can't prevent the state and those outside our community from dictating what is best for us. I believe, and I'm sitting here holding this charter, and I've spent a lot of time over many years investing a lot of time in understanding what this charter means and what it suggests for our community. What I would tell you, and you let me know, Mr. Caswell, when that uh, card has to come up, uh, what I would suggest is this. <laughs> that, boy, you didn't waste any time, did you? <laughs> what I would suggest is this, that there are key aspects. Uh, the councilman uh, from the fifth board identified. We have a bloated administrative staff, there are 20 people between department heads and appointees. We have, and we need to address this and decide our priority, priorities, but the people need to decide whether we continue with an ombudsman's office, a civil service commission, and other key aspects. Thank you. Good afternoon. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out. I want to thank the organization that, um, put this event on. In regards to the Charter, I'm the new kid on the block, but I have been studying the Charter. And based on what I'm looking at the Charter is that there should be some, some changes to the Charter. And I'm just, only the biggest concern that I'm having is that through the emergency manager, we have one of the laws on democracy. And if we can talk, talk about changing the Charter, we have not even applied um, been able to do what's in this charter. We're not even living under the, the guidelines of this charter, and we're going to create another charter um, that we have to make changes to because the way that the uh, economy is going, the population is going. So yes, there need to be changes to that charter. We don't have 100, 200 thousand people like we used to have. So we have to be able to adjust the charter to the, in the direction that the um, city is trying to go. But in the meantime, the most important thing that I have is democracy. And that we are the legislative body. We can take that power from the city council. And that power does not stay it's in this charter. So we have to be very careful when we're talking about um, tangible assets as this charter and be able to look for the good. So as your city uh, council person if elected, I will look very closely into this charter, and I think it should be the people that it has to vote to make the changes. Okay, thank you. We're going to stay with the charter for a little while because it's so important. It's how our rights and our privileges are defined. So our next question is, the charter states and the citizens voted in favor of an ombudsman office. The financial manager abolished the office and the civil service office. So, would you support the reinstatement of both offices, the Ombudsman and the Civil Service Commission? And please give reasons for your answer. And we're starting with Kennedy Davis. Yes, I would like to see, well first and foremost, I would be in remiss if I don't thank everyone for attending today. And I apologize for not thanking in the beginning. I would like to thank the NAACP for bringing forth the candidates so that we can express ourselves. People can become a little intimate with who we are and understand what it is that we're going to do to bring some resolution to the problems that has crippled our city. 
and has been crippling our city for such a long time, and there's no remedy that's even been executed whatsoever. And I would like to thank the concerned pastors. I would like to thank all of the other prestigious people who are in here, and I think each and every one of you are prestigious people, so I would just say I thank all of you for coming. Um, I think the ombudsman should get back in office because we need people to do investigations. Whenever we need things investigated, we have nobody in place to be able to investigate the issues that may be going on inside of our city. Um, the financial manager came in and divorced us from that right, but it was only due because we lost our democracy and unfortunately, the councilman that's in my ward voted for the emergency manager to come here who has actually taken our democracy. I'm not casting aspersions and nor as I'm throwing any slights. It's just the true fact. If I put a dollar bill on the table and somebody took the dollar and we found out who it was, he is considered a thief. So I'm just saying that our city councilman in the fifth ward voted for us to lose our democracy. And it's something that we have to be very mindful of. Be very mindful of. So I think whenever things get in place, 18 months from now, we can vote him out of office. And when we vote him out of office, we can bring our democracy back and we'll be able to get the ombudsman back and everything else that we think that would bring some remedy or some resolution to the problems that is crippling in us. So yes, I'm, I'm, I'm for bringing the ombudsman back. We need it back and we needed it back like yesterday. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm not gonna respond to any, uh, any attacks uh, towards my character or my votes. Uh, and and uh, people can go back and look at the record and see how I voted and uh, of course, that was totally inaccurate, but um, the question was regarding uh, the Ombudsman and the Civil Service Commission as it relates to the Charter. And, uh, you know, the, the Ombudsman uh, office was removed uh, by the emergency manager, and, you know, that is an avenue uh, for the people to uh, file complaints and, 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 and get investigations done. Uh, regarding uh, city services and their displeasure with uh, city services, and I believe that that is that is a uh, crippling effect to our community. I believe that when it was taken away, it sh something else should have been put in place. Another process maybe should have been put in place so that the individuals uh, that file complaints can have their voices heard and investigated. Um, so, I would be supportive of uh, this going before the people, uh, both the civil service and the ombudsman uh, uh, office to go before the people and let the people decide, uh, you know, what they would like to have in the charter uh, and uh, uh, what they would like to have in place of the charter, in, uh, excuse me, in place of the ombudsman and the civil service. And I, too, wanted to thank everyone that put this together. Um, if we were in a different environment, we would say protocol has been set. And so that was in my mind, but I didn't say it. I just want to thank you for inviting me. Um, when you look at the responsibility of the ombudsman, I'm from a banking background, and so audits are normal. And so the fact that you had someone that was responsible when you um, look at the charter that had the ability to initiate audits, um, where it sounds like there's not a lot of audits that are going on in our city government. In the banking industry, we had surprise audits. And surprise audits are done as a protection to the financial institution and to those that are around. And the reason why is if you don't have someone that's watching over everything, misappropriation can happen. And sometimes audits are good for everybody because they protect a person from their own selves. Sometimes you find yourselves in situations that you wouldn't normally do something, but because of a situation, you'll find yourself moving things around that shouldn't be moved around. And so I think that if there's a person that can be in place that does investigations that are not bound by um, the office and, and, and is actually responding to the needs of the people, the concerns of the people, we should support that. So yes, I would support that being put back in place. Thank you. I uh, mentioned uh, in my opening statement uh, the will of the people. The 
people determine what is best for their local government, except for Flint, Detroit, Benton Harbor, a few other communities that are under the same scenario we're in. Very frankly, my personal belief is we have limited resources, we have to make tough decisions. I know we had a referendum on the Ombudsman's office, and they said back a few years ago, we need to keep that office. I respect that. But I also say we have a changing environment. Under the EFM, of course, the office was put on the shelf. The Civil Service Commission, likewise. I would suggest when we get or in this process of transitioning from the EFM to local control, that we do have another referendum. We decide what we want to spend our money on. As I said, my preference is because this office involves approximately or had a budget of approximately a quarter million dollars. My thought is, and my proposal, should the voters decide that we can go without the Ombudsman's office, my proposal would be a constituent service office. People directly <coughs> accountable, probably two, three individuals that I believe can serve the same purpose, probably saving approximately 85, 80 to 85 percent of the monies we now budget for the Ombudsman's office. What we need to do in this community is be smart about how we allocate our tax dollars. Or what you pay this community is precious. And we, as the proposed individuals to serve on the council, need to be cognizant of you and your tax dollars. 